All right, guys, welcome to uh, another Series Futsu interview with uh, the one and only Dr. Andre Caro. Andre, how have you been? Yeah, I've been great. Um, things are going really well. Just uh, hope you all have been safe and in, in getting through all this time in Melbourne as well. Yeah, so we're uh, heading into Stage 4 lockdown as of tomorrow. So uh, pretty me pretty much means that uh, we can't go anywhere. Um, but... Let's not worry about us. Uh, uh, we want to know how you're going uh, so far since uh, you moved. Yeah, we're going to our third week uh, of work in, in Dubai. Uh, my third week since I've been here. Uh, I, I couldn't be any happier with how things are going. Uh, mm -hmm. I had an expectation and th this expectation being reached and, uh, and it's going even beyond this expectation. So I'm really happy. Tell us about it, uh, the move. Um, how did it come about um, and uh, the process behind it? So uh, basically through my social social media network, uh, for many years, this this direct, the director of the club, his name is Mansour. He's been following me on social media for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, every June, June every year, there's a big tournament here. It's a one week tournament during Ramadan. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Ramadan changed a little bit each year, but ba most years are in June. Uh, he invited me three years ago to come play this tournament. Mm -hmm. It uh, was a one-week tournament. They bring the best players in the world. Uh, at that time, my, my father-in-law was very sick. I couldn't come. So mm -hmm. that was a dream of mine to come play that tournament. I couldn't come. But I kept in touch with him. Uh, and then during the lockdown in April, uh, I had a live interview on Instagram with Rafael Fogagero. Yeah. And he, he was the head coach of this club, Al Nasser. Mm -hmm. uh, by coincidence, uh, what happened is after the interview, he just said, look, I'm looking for an assistant coach. Uh, would, would you be keen? I say, they, they call me by surprise. I, I, I yeah. didn't know what to say. I say, look, it's very unlikely I could, I could leave now because uh, how things are going in Australia, my life and everything. Yeah. And we, we left like that. Then a couple months later, the director called me again. and said, look, uh, uh, we're looking for an assistant coach. Uh, the director didn't know that Rafael had invited me. Okay. And then, then I said, look, uh, let me have a think again. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a, I had a good chat with Peter as well. I have a good, I had a good chat with my family. Yeah. They all been very supportive since the start. And, and then I, I made the decision to say yes. And then when I say yes, uh, they told each other, they, they both like was surprised that they had both invited me and yeah, then it was a, it was a good surprise for them. And it was, it was very yeah. exciting for me too. Tell us about that. I mean, you mentioned that you spoke to your family. How was it uh, important to get their point of view, especially your wife? Uh, because obviously you've got to pick up and move. Um, tell us a bit more about that. I think uh, I always wanted to go overseas again to get deeper into the game. Uh, I take a lot of pride for everything that we've built in Australia, mm -hmm. uh, everything that Futsal has done, and I've been part of the journey for the last 10 years. Uh, I think what we've done is something that it's it's nowhere in the world. I think we should be, we should all the, the Melbourne community should be very proud of what we've created in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I, I had to go overseas again to get deeper into the game, not just about the managing side, but also deeper into the game itself. Like tra again, training five times a week and mm -hmm. and being work with someone like Rafael. The mm -hmm. uh, for people that didn't know, he was coaching the best team in Iran, and Iran is one of the best leagues in the world. He was Iranian champion three years ago with uh, mm. uh, uh, the, the name of the team I, I can't pronounce. But so to work alongside with him is is more than doing a coaching course. It's more mm. than uh, training once a week or twice a week. It's yeah. uh, just imagine that it's uh, every day we we work seven hours on studying the game. Wow! It's, uh, yeah, it's it's an opportunity that I wanted to take it for. I've been wanting to take for a long time and. Anita has been very supportive. Uh, she she's doing she's do, doing uni again, her second degree, and and uh, and luckily it's all an online course, so yeah. she was able to come with me, no problem. Did you have to uh, sell the idea to her? Or was she really keen to move? I think at this time it's, 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 it seemed like it sounded like a, uh, just a dream or just something that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And then since day one, she told me, "Yeah, look, if you want it, uh, we'll do it." Then. We discussed that for one week, for two weeks, and then one day I just told her, "Look, I've said yes to Rafael," and then she, and then <laughs> and then she got shocked. And like she, I don't think she was expecting me to say yes. Yeah. And then that's when we say, "All right, we're going two weeks 
and then we had two weeks to prepare ourselves, uh, get everything sorted to go. Look, I'm sure the duty free shopping will make up for it. So uh, <laughs> everything was shut. There was, <laughs> there was no duty free open. Don't worry. So you've had a bit, as you mentioned, you had a bit of time there. What's the one thing that's really caught your eye whilst you've been in Dubai? Um, well, the, the city itself, it, it seems like you're in, a, in another planet. Uh, it seems like you're in Las Vegas, for example. Everything is big. There's so mm. many uh, um, yeah, tall buildings and everything doesn't seem real. It seems, uh, it seems a bit like a, like a dream world, a dream lane. But... Uh, what caught my attention here is the structure of the club. The, uh, they provide you anything that you need. Like just, uh, let's say, for example, we need polos for the players to track the, the running status. Yeah. Every player has a polo. Uh, so it's, we, have, we, have, we use the infrastructure of the soccer club as well. So every training day is a physio there watching the training with us. So if someone feels a little knock on the, on the ankle, the, mm -hmm. the physio runs right there, you know? Yeah. So, they provide the players everything they need to improve, and I think that's a that's a massive difference. It's a, it's it's the money that they invest. I think it, it it's paying off, and it's gonna pay off for them. What do you think has been the biggest culture shock? What's the one thing that uh, is it the when you when you went there? Did you expect sort of a few things, or is it just been out of out of out of your mind? It's just been crazy. Um, well, little things. Uh, for example, the. Uh, my wife has to uh, be a bit more conservative here as well. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's it's not a massive sh uh, culture shock because we we see lots of uh, the uh, even the Muslim um, uh, community. We have mm -hmm. lots in Australia, and yeah. and I have lots of friends. So th this this part wasn't new. Yeah. But for example, yes, they, uh, the senior team trains at seven o'clock and finishes at eight thirty. Then the twenties start from eight thirty and finishes at ten. And at seven o'clock they have to pray, for example. Okay. And then sometimes we have to we start the warm up, they stop to pray for ten minutes, and then yeah. and then, then we continue the on the training session. It's not something they're hard to to get used to, but yeah, yeah it's just something a bit different for us. Have you had a chance to go around the city and just uh, sightseeing a little bit? Yeah, we have a we have two days off a week at the moment. We're training five times a week. Uh, we still don't have the, the game, so the mm -hmm. games are meant to start first week of September. So every day off, Rafael takes me and Anita to uh, yeah, to a, to a place to see. We've seen that uh, that big building. We've we've gone to the palm tree, the, the island, in the ocean. Yeah, we've seen a fair bit. Awesome place. And uh, how, tell us a little bit more. How does your day start? So obviously for us here, you know, we we have a lot of sort of set routine. But what's a set routine now for you guys over there? Uh, we, we are full-time employees, uh, Rafael and I, so that means uh, we have to work whenever the club needs us to work. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we're not, we have an office in the club that it's a futsal office. There is, four de there is three desks uh, just for futsal, but we're not, we're not allowed to work from there. So at the moment, Rafael and I have been staying in the same hotel for the first month. Mm -hmm. So Rafael is in level 12, I'm level 6. So we, we, ca we catch up uh, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We do about two hours... Uh, uh, he's studying, he's studying the training session, planning the training session, but also watching videos from players that we might sign for overseas as well. That's a big part of the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, we only have the local players with us, mm -hmm. uh, or international players are made to come next week. They, they, yeah, they should be arriving next week. So at the moment, we we do two hours training, planning, uh, and then uh, we go to the club. We have half an hour meeting with the with the leadership of the club. Um, then about three hours training including both trainings, seniors and under 20s. The seniors, I'm his assistant coach, so I'm helping him the whole time. And, uh, and pretty much I, I train uh, a, a, a big part of the training session, I join in the training as well. Okay. Uh, to make up numbers sometimes or even to, yeah, to help with the level as well. Uh, and then under 20s training, we have another meeting with the, after every training, before and after every training session, we have a meeting with the, with the director, with the supervisor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's it's very good. So tell us a little bit more about how you guys plan for training, because obviously around uh, you know in Australia we're we're semi professionals here, whereas over there it's full time professional. What goes into your training plan uh, when you sit down with Raphael? So what's uh, what's uh, one of the biggest difference in Australia is the calendar in Australia is foot the whole year round. You mm -hmm. can't really have a preseason. 
Mm-hmm. So by saying that, you're not go, you're not gonna go crazy at training because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna die. You know, you're gonna yeah. get injured. Australia, they they try to keep that same level for the whole year round, which is the right thing to do. Yeah. You can't really train more than twice, three times a week. You're gonna get injured. You're gonna get tired uh, over training. Here, we know that the season is gonna start first week of September. So since the day we arrived, we knew that we had seven weeks. Mm-hmm. And we had seven weeks to prepare the team training five t- five days a week. So together with the fitness uh, conditioning trainer, we came up with a, with a schedule that over the seven weeks we had to get them fit, but also work on every aspect of the game. So yeah. for example, we had to, uh, the first couple of weeks, for example, we, we worked on the technical aspect yeah. and, uh, and, the, and the game system, the way we play the game, the, the movements that we use. Mm-hmm. The next couple of weeks, we're gonna, we start working on set pieces and then we're going to, uh, just a, a few weeks before the season starts, we're going to go into transition, which counterattacks. So we we had seven weeks times five trainings a week to yeah. to work on every single aspect of the game. Uh, so that that's that's another thing that I was looking forward to here is how to prepare a team, knowing that we're going to start the season in six weeks. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's what's good about Rafael. He has he has very clear in his mind, and also we have a calendar that. First week we work on this, second week yeah. we work on this, and then each session we, we we progress to the next. So we start, let's say, counter attack level one today, yeah. counter attack level two tomorrow, level three. But level two, we start with level one very quickly and we move on to level two. So it's all, always progressing and getting a bit harder for the players for when the season starts, the team is ready to go. And uh, tell us something that you've learned from Rafael. You've mentioned, um, you know, you, you've been in contact with him for quite a while and you're, you're his assistant. What's something that you've learned from him that you, you can introduce when you're coaching your under 20s and also if you manage to do come back one day? I think uh, what's important is uh, his capacity of uh, visualizing what's not going right and fixing. Mm-hmm. So, for example, we, we, uh, coaching, everyone knows. It's easy to find a drill for coaching. It's like, ah, oh, let's say I want to work transition. Yeah. I want to work set piece. Come to my YouTube, there'll be a hundred drills there. <laughs> but the way you, the way you deliver that, that's the key, and that's why Rafael is so good as well. Uh, and that's uh, I, I had already a lot of experience with that. But working together with him, and then we go to the club together. We have these meetings together. I see the way he's thinking. So, for example, is uh, a couple of days ago we did a training session. And we, we finished the training session, we, we feel the players didn't get it what we were saying. Yeah. The day after, we just went a step back, we start again. We, uh, was a was a training session on how to finish the attack. So, for example, in Futsu, the first third of the of the training of the game, it's elaborate. So you wanna mm-hmm. you wanna set up the attack. But then once you get close to the attack, how do you finish the attack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it was a training session on how to finish, and we felt they didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And then he asked, we went a step back. Uh, we 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 went, we did it again with different types of exercise, and then they got it. And then we say, "Far today was a really good training session." We feel they they're doing better now, you know. So that yeah. his capability of uh, of seeing mistakes and and how to fix those mistakes, I think that's that comes with experience as well. And when we, you mentioned that you know it's a great opportunity. How what do you want to achieve? Uh, let's say. For example, if you do happen to come back, we hope you know you are successful. But if you do come to come back, what does success look like for you? Do you reckon? I think the future for me in Australia it's a bit uncertain for me at the moment. It's uh, all my mind is here in in right now at the present. Uh, I, it's very hard for me to say what I want to achieve in Australia. What what I know is that every day I'm learning seven hours a week, uh, seven hours of food. So that's mm. that's for me is the most important. And where this experience is going to take me in Australia, I think, um, I think uh, I'm very confident to say that whatever I'll do there, I'll try my best and I'll be successful mm-hmm. because uh, I'll be working really hard. Yeah. Uh, so it's at the moment, it's a bit tricky for me to say uh, what, how I'm going to apply the experience in Australia if the, if the clubs are training once a day, once yeah. a week, sorry. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think it will be a lot of work, working the coach of, of the club saying, um, Taking Fitro as an example of a good young team, the, let's take them and train. All right, guys, you guys must train four, the, four times a week. Mm. So, but how, how are we going to do that? We have to find Kohar, we have to do that. So, I think mm. there'll be a lot of work done behind the scenes. And, and once I get to that type of environment that we're able to get Pascovic train four or five times a week, I think that there'll be a very exciting future. 
what do you hope to achieve whilst you're in Dubai? So that's probably the one thing that people, you know, we want to know is what, what's the success look like for Andre in Dubai? We, we, so the, how, how, the, how everything works here is that you're allowed to have three international players on the court. Until two years ago, you're allowed to have three international players and those three could be whatever age. So they could yeah. be 25, 30 mm -hmm. years old. So they used to bring three of the best players in the world here to play. Since two years ago, they changed the rule that those three international players must be under 20s. Okay. Uh, the reason for that is that they want to get this, give these players the citizenship one day to play for the national team. So that's, they did the same thing with soccer here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now they want to improve the national team. That's how they did that. Um, or three international players that we're bringing here, they, they all, they all one of the best players in Brazil. And there is some chance I might be able to bring one player from Australia, but the directors at this time, he said, no chance, we're not going to bring anyone from Australia. But now he, this player might come with the condition that he comes in a one-month uh, test at this time. So if he doesn't do well for the first month, he goes back home. Yeah. So the, my, my goal here, the international players that we had last season, the, the last season they finished third with some good international players. But this year we're bringing even better international players. We're hoping to finish top two or win the or win the championship in the senior level. And then the twenties, they lost in the grand final last year, so mm. I have to go a step further. Uh, uh, the pressure is on me to win the championship for the under twenties. Do you think that pressure is uh, it be bring out the best of you, uh, and it will really make you step out of your comfort zone and make sure you know you tick things off and get to that you know win that elusive title. Well, I think you always you always need a little bit of luck, but um, I think I'm confident in in my in my work. Uh, the seven weeks preparing in the twenties team, uh, yeah, I, I'm not really worried about the pressure. I think if I win, I came here, I knew that I had to I had to perform. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's just a, another another excitement for me. That's that's all it is. Tell us a little bit more about the under twenty squad. Uh, what have you seen uh, that's really impressed you? Uh, the local players are very similar to the level in Australia. And if anything, we have some players in Australia that are probably better than the local players from here. Uh, but again, the players here are training five times a week. So they're improving, mm. they're improving very fast and quickly. Um, I see that they, they're very committed. And, and those commitments probably come because uh, they're all, getting, they all have, in a professional contract. Mm -hmm. So... I don't see much difference between here and Australia level-wise. I just see that here they're super committed because they are in a contract. So, like, mm -hmm. uh, they, I think that's that's mainly what it is. Uh, they they have the investment behind, and they need to get results from that. Yeah, and you mentioned that yeah, potentially there could be an Australian uh, coming over. Which names come to mind that you think that could do well over there if you had the chance well, to sign them? The first thing is uh, this player must be. Uh, I, can't, I cannot give names at this stage, and uh, and I really hope with this player that comes that which we we are in a final uh, finalizing the process of him coming. I really hope he comes and performs because if he comes and performs, he will open doors for the for the future players. If mm -hmm. he comes and doesn't perform, I think um, he will close many doors for future Australians. So the pressure is a lot on him, and, and he's aware of that. Yeah. Uh, the only hint I can say is that we're not going to bring any 19, 18 year old, 17 year old boys. This player must be 20 because he'll be competing. You're only allowed to have three international players on the court. Yeah, we're yeah. already bringing three guns from Brazil. So this player is going to be competing with these three players for, for game time, you know? So, yeah, uh, yeah that's, uh, that's all I can say at this stage. So no hint at uh, who it is? Well, the, this play is born in 2000. That's all I can say. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one there. Speaking of which, I'm not sure how, how much up to date you are with Pasco. Uh, news coming out yesterday that, uh, you know, Paul Taylor is no longer the president and Simon Wondock is now the president. Um, big news for us here because we didn't see that coming. Um, how Have you heard that at all? Well, yeah, I've been supporting them behind the scenes uh, with... Uh, with me coming here, I had to step out from the from the committee because of time wise I'm very busy here and my mind's not there. Uh, once yeah. your mind's not somewhere you, you have to you have to stop. Um, uh, Simon always been the general manager and one stage was Simon President and Paul general manager. Yeah. So basically it's Paul he can't be there anymore. He's uh he's been suspended from the sentence from what I've been told. Mm. Uh, so Simon had to step in. Uh, but he's he's very aware of the role that he has. He has support from 
he has a lot of support from from Greg, from Paul Vidic, uh, yeah. even myself. Simon messaged me, I say my opinion. So I think he's uh, he's full he's full capable of of doing the job. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big restructure for uh, Pascoval because they've lost the likes of yourself, Alejandro, Ellison Lima, Maurizio Novak, Jao de Silva, uh, de Silva retiring, uh, we're hearing, um, Aaron obviously being out injured. Where, what's next if you, do you feel for Pascoval? Do they just re restart again or is it do they try to bring in experience, do you reckon? I think I think they're gonna they're gonna so Pascovel it's been we we've had uh, the six teams eight teams very strong team for, based in Mount yeah. Uh They they every year they get to the grand final, but every year they lose to Petroy in the grand final. Uh, but it's a very talented team. I think they they're the future of the club, together with some players that all the time I know that the club gets messages from players that want to come to Pascovel. So I think. These uh, these experienced players that might come together with these young players, it's a good mixture. We see the mm -hmm. same happening in Spain, for example. Inter Movistar, they just won yeah. the Spanish league. Yeah. Uh, they lost half of the squad and they bring in half of the young players. Mm -hmm. So this transition happens. Um, I think it's time for the club to to freshen up and and uh, and get ready for the future. What's one thing do you miss about Australia? Uh, I, I love the community. I love the the people in Australia. Uh, people here are really nice, but it's still it's still here no home. Australia's home. Uh, I just uh, yeah, I just re really wish that Melbourne was in the situation people were able to live their lives. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, I feel people are stuck. They're not living. They're not themselves. Hmm. Well, uh, Andre, look, I can't thank you enough for your time. It's so great to see you and hear you. Uh, we're hearing a lot of good things as you mentioned. We well, hopefully we wish you all the success. Uh, Hopefully you can send us the links to your games. I'm sure everyone would love to watch them. Um, look, if they need any commentators, I'm happy to fly over if you need. Uh, but look, thank you so much for your time. I can't thank you enough. Um, we'll be watching, I think the whole of Australia will be watching you very closely and we hope that you really do succeed and, you know, you fly that flag for uh, serious futsal. Thank you very much. Just before I go, I want to share a news and it's, uh, it's probably not a good news, but um, I want everyone to pray for him. Uh, so people that don't know, Paul Vidic had a heart attack last week. Right. Uh, a lot of people probably don't know this. I don't know if you knew yourself. No, no. Uh, so he had a heart attack. It wasn't his first heart attack. He had one a couple of weeks ago. He had a surgery. So last week he had a surgery again. He's in hospital. He's recovering. Apparently the surgery went well. So I want everyone to pray for him. And he's a he's a top guy. And uh, I think he's the best height I've ever met. And uh, yeah, I want everyone to pray for him. And that's, that's all. Yeah, well, hopefully there's a speedy recovery. We'd love to see him and we wish him all the best in his recovery. Thank you so much, Andre. Uh, we can't thank you. Uh, we wish you and your wife, uh, Anita, all the best uh, going forward. We hope to hear from you again and uh, we hope to see you on the sidelines in the future. Thanks for tonight. Yeah, I, I, I really thank you guys and I, I can't wait to see everyone uh, back to life as normal in, in Melbourne.